physics students, good afternoon. Mr. Fugit here. Uh, in this video today, we're going to be looking at a sample problem involving forces acting on an object uh, where we apply Newton's law to solve for the acceleration on an object. Now this video is going to be the first of two parts, so in one part we're going to kind of start analyzing the problem and in the second part we'll do a little bit more of the solving here. Okay? So this is specifically going to be covering over problem number seven on homework five, which is the sailboat problem involving forces at an angle on one object. Okay? So let's read our problem. It says this, a 22,400 kilogram sailboat experiences an eastward force of 31,600 newtons due to the tide pushing its hull. So here, I'm gonna start just piecing my free body diagram together as I go. So our free body diagram, we're told we have a force due east. And I'm gonna call this F1, just as a way to keep track of the two forces we have here. And we're told this force is 31,600 newtons. Okay? Now as we continue reading, we're also told this. The wind pushes our sails with a force of 60,800 newtons directed toward the northwest, 45 degrees westward of north or 45 degrees northward of west. So we have a second force here. And we're told that it's northwest. I'm going to call this F2. And it has a magnitude of 60,800 newtons. Now we're asked here for what is the magnitude of the resultant acceleration of the sailboat. So we want to find overall what is our acceleration? Now we're also given a mass of 22,400 kilograms. Now some of your numbers are going to vary a little bit depending on uh, the problem that you have, but it's the same idea here. And so what we're looking to find is what's going on with this sailboat? What is it going to do as a result of the forces that are being applied? And as you can probably tell, it looks like we're going to have an imbalance here. Okay? We have a force that's just east and a force that's kind of east and or that's west and north. So to find our acceleration, we're going to need Newton's second law, but we're going to need to apply that in both directions, both the x and in the y, to get a good idea of what's going on here. Okay? So I'm going to take this picture, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to visually write in that this force number two has a component in the x direction and it has a component in the y direction, what we'll call F2 in the x and F2 in the y. And we're told that this force is at an angle of 45 degrees. And that information is going to become really helpful as we move forward, because as we've dealt with Newton's second law, the way that we can deal with forces at an angle is by breaking them into their components, because we have a good way to deal with things that are just in the x and just in the y direction. So I'm going to refer to my coordinate system like this. To the right is the positive x, and up is the positive y. Just so I have a good way of keeping track of my forces. And so as you'll see, we have now two forces in the x, F1 and F2 in the x, and one force in the y, F2 in the y. And what we're going to have to do here is find our acceleration in both directions to find our what we call resultant, our overall acceleration. So let's start by writing out Newton's second law. Step one, our free body diagram. And step two, Newton's second law. Sum of forces on an object is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, as we've done, we're going to take Newton's second law and break it down. Because we want to figure out what's going on horizontally in the x and also vertically in the y direction. So, I'll take my equation. I'm going to break it down. Sum of forces in the x is mass times acceleration in the x. As well... Sum of forces in the y is equal to mass times acceleration in the y. So all we've done here is we've written out our free body diagram, and now we're going to use Newton's second law. Okay. So, as you can tell from our free body diagram, there are three forces total. One, F1, that's just horizontal. Two, F2 in the x, which is the x component of F2. And three, F2 in the y, which is just the y component of F2. We really have two forces, but we're gonna treat F2 like it has an X and a Y component so that we can make solving this problem a lot easier. So all I'm gonna do now is take these forces and I'm gonna put them in to my equation for Newton's second law. The tricky part is that I don't know F2 in the X and F2 in the Y. Okay? So I can't take this 60,800 and plug it in, because right now it doesn't really fit. 
So the first thing we need to do is break this force down into its components. So let's do that really quickly. Here we go. We've got F2, which has a magnitude of 60,800 newtons. And what we want to do is I want to, we want to break that force into two components, F2 in the X and F2 in the Y. Now we know from our problem statement that that force is acting at a 45 degree angle. And fortunately for us, what that means is that those two components, F2 in the X and F2 in the Y, are going to be the same magnitude. So if I use my acronym for trig functions, which we'll need here, SOHCAHTOA, Okay. doesn't matter which side we choose to solve for because due to the angle that we have, they're going to be the same. So let's say I want to find my x component. Okay. So to find my x component, that's adjacent to my angle. I have my hypotenuse. That's going to mean I use my cosine function. So cosine of our angle, 45 degrees, will give us our x component, f2 and the x, divided by our hypotenuse, which we know is 60,800 newtons. Now, in order for me to get F2 in the X by itself, looks like I need to do some multiplying here. I'm going to multiply this 60,800 newtons on both sides of my equation. Because that equal sign in the middle tells me that what I do to one side, I have to apply to the other. So this 60,800 is going to cancel out. And this is what I'm going to plug in to find my F2 in the X direction. 60,800 times cosine of 45 degrees. We'll take a moment, plug that in, make sure you're in degree mode, otherwise it's going to cause us some problems. So we'll get, the, we'll get a value for F2 and the X that looks like this, about 42,922 newtons. Okay? Now, as I mentioned, because of the angle here, our force in the X direction and our force in the Y direction are going to be the same. Okay? So all we did here was we took our force that was in an angle, at an angle, excuse me, and we broke it down into its components. Because now we can plug those in to our equation for Newton's second law, which is going to make our life a lot easier in this problem. So I'm going to take this value and I'm going to come back to our previous page. We now know that F2 in the X equals F2 in the Y, which is 42,922 Newtons. Excuse me, it's 992, I apologize. I was reading some numbers wrong. 42,992. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my force values and I'm going to plug them into Newton's second law. Because we want to find, remember, our acceleration. So there are two values that we need to solve for here. One in the x and one in the y. So I'm going to write out my equation for Newton's second law. I'm going to say that F2 in the x direction is negative because it's pointing to the left. So negative F2 in the x plus F1 is going to equal my mass times my acceleration in the x. Okay? So this value is negative 42,992, because it's in the negative direction, newtons, plus 31,600 newtons. Just adding those forces up. Okay? One's negative, one's positive. So I'll do that. Okay? And together, those are going to give me negative 11,392. And don't forget, that's equal to our mass times our acceleration. Now, as our problem statement was asking, we're looking for acceleration here. So to get acceleration, I know my mass, thankfully, so I'm just going to plug that in to find acceleration in the x direction. Negative 11,392 is equal to my mass, 22,400 kilograms, times acceleration. Okay. Once I've done that, you'll notice to get acceleration by itself, we simply need to divide by our mass. So I'll do that on both sides of our equation. I'll divide by 22,400. You'll notice I've dropped some of the units off here because we've already made sure to plug in the units that we need, newtons and kilograms. So this is going to give us a way to find our acceleration in the x direction. Okay. Yeah. So I'll take negative 11,392 divide by our mass, 22,400, and I'm going to get a value for my acceleration in the x direction. And for me, that's going to be a negative value, about 0.508 meters per second squared. 
And all that means is that I have an imbalance in my forces, meaning I've got more force directed in the negative direction. So my object, my sailboat, is going to want to tend to move in the negative x direction. But that's only part of our answer. We need to find the acceleration in the y direction to ultimately find our final answer. Now, what you're going to do in the y direction looks very similar. We're going to go through the same process. Utilize Newton's second law, plug our forces in the y direction in, and find acceleration. And that's where we're going to go in the next video, finding that acceleration in the y direction, and then we'll look at what we need to do with both values to find our final answer. But hopefully, this will get you going in the right direction. Good luck.